Hello, I bid you greetings from Victory in Christ Christian Center's prayer ministry. Well, today we'll be talking about what's the point teaching series. I'm Rhonda Carden, and I will be your teacher for today. So today we're gonna to delve into the third prayer point of the six points used by our prayer ministry into strategic prayer. Before I get started, I'd like to give honor to our leaders here at Victory in Christ Christian Center, Bishop John and Pastor Aisha Edmondson. I'm so grateful for their leadership and everything they've put into me to help us be successful in life and in ministry. I have the privilege and honor of teaching today on strongholds. Strongholds are twofold in the spirit. There are strongholds of the mind that the enemy uses against the people of God and then the God that we serve is a mighty stronghold of safety, security, and protection for the believers. What is a stronghold? Collins English Dictionary defines stronghold as a well-fortified place, a fortress. Webster defines fortress as any fortified place, a fort, a castle, a stronghold, a place of defense, or security. There are two types of spiritual strongholds. The first is an incorrect pattern of thinking that has been fortified, built up, and protected by our arguments, our reasonings, and or belief and trust in the lies that the enemy has told us about ourselves, about others, and different situations and circumstances in our lives. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 in the NIV says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. A stronghold of the mind is anything that keeps you stuck and impedes forward motion. The following are some examples of strongholds of the mind, although not all encompassing. Sickness, depression, oppression, anger, unforgiveness, insecurity, doubt, and chiefly fear. 1 John 4.18 in the Amplified Classical says, There is no fear in love. Dread does not exist, but full-grown, complete, perfect love turns fear out of doors and expels every trace of terror. For fear brings with it the thought of punishment. And so he who is afraid has not reached the full maturity of love, is not yet grown into love's complete perfection. We thank God for his perfect love because when fear comes in, when the stronghold of fear tries to grip us and take over our minds, his perfect love casts out fear. And we are no longer subject to its throes or, or it, um, having us captive. So we thank God for his love and we have to grow into his love, acknowledge his love and learn what it means to have perfect love because the love that we give as humans is not perfect, but it's God's perfect love that will cast out fear. There are four basic points that make up the anatomy of a stronghold of the mind. First, the first thing is an event. An event is something that happens to us or a loved one or something that did not happen that we expect it to happen, or something that is passed down from generation to generation. So when we think about that, an event could be a number of things. Things that um, we could have been abused, or we could have been mistreated or rejected. That can be an event that um, is the first part of the anatomy of a stronghold, where it begins, uh, the genesis so to speak, or something that did not happen. We were thinking that um, um, maybe a relationship you were in, you were thinking maybe it will lead to marriage. So it didn't happen. So that event is traumatic to you. So that is an event that can cause a stronghold in our mind if we're not careful or something passed down from generation to generation. It could be generational curses. It could be generational ways of thinking. You know, if, if, if your parents, they can only give you what they know. So if, if they were 
taught negativity or viewed life through negative eyes, that could be passed down from your mother to you. So that can be an event. So an event can be all types of things, but that's the initiation or the genesis of how a stronghold of the mind begins. The next point is a lie. When we assign or connect lies about God, others, or ourselves to such an event, no matter what that event was, as I just went over different types of events, when we, when we begin to attach lies and say, um, let's say, if we had the event of adoption, you were put up for adoption. So a lie about that would be, I'm not loved. Nobody loves me. You know, I'll never be loved. That can be a lie that we place on ourselves and we attach it to that event and it begins to start building a stronghold in our mind. The third point is defense. When we make inner vows to ourselves surrounding those lies. And that could be... Um, I'll never let that happen to me again. Um, nobody's ever going to love me. When we start making these vows and making these decrees about ourselves, we have to be extremely careful about that. Because in those inner vows and in that defense, we give the enemy legal right where he had no right to us. But when we speak these negative vows out of our mouths, we open up the door for him to have access to our lives. So we must be extremely careful in these points. So again, I'm gonna go over them. The first one is an event, something that happens to us or didn't happen to us. The next thing is a lie that we assign to that event because it has happened to us. And then our defense mechanisms begin to come up when we make inner vows about what we won't do and what's not gonna happen to us or we're not loved or we're not um, um, cared for. And then the fourth one is the reaction. And this is what happens or arises from our defense mechanisms and vows, fear, doubt, Unbelief, anger, resentment, unforgiveness, bitterness, depression, oppression, etc. Going back to the example of adoption, we may become bitter or resentful for our birth parents because they gave us up for an adoption. So we have to be very careful. These are the points. These are the ways that the enemy puts strongholds in our minds. Strongholds of the minds are a tool that Satan uses against the sons and daughters of God in spiritual warfare. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That's 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 4 in the King James Version. Although we are in constantly in battle and in warfare for our mind, the weapons of our warfare are not natural. They're not carnal. We can't fight with um being having an attitude or treating somebody nasty. No, they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. We have to lean into the word of God and the spirit of God when we engage in warfare and we fight. We are not fighting carnal wars. So the Holy Spirit gave me Joshua chapter six to use as a visual for what a stronghold looks like and how we are to pull them down with spiritual weapons through the power of God. Joshua 6, 1 through 5 says, Now Jericho, a fortified city with high walls, was tightly closed because of the people's fear of the sons of Israel. No one went out or came in. The Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand with its king and the mighty warriors. Now you shall march around the city, all the men of war circling the city once. You shall do this once each day for six days. Also, seven priests shall carry seven trumpets made of ram's horns ahead of the ark. Then on the seventh day, you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. When they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall cry out with a great shout, a battle cry, and the wall of the city will fall down in its place, and the people shall go up, each man going straight ahead, climbing over the rubble. And again, that's Joshua 6, 1 through 5, and that's the Amplified Version. 
As we talked about, as I gave the definitions of what a stronghold was, Jericho was a legit stronghold. It was a fortified city with high walls. Nobody could come in and nobody can go out. So it is a visual of what a natural stronghold looks like. But then as the um, children of Israel and Joshua, as they listened to the voice and the command of the Lord, and they followed his instructions to a T, they did not have to use battering rams or, or weapons of natural use. They did what the Lord said and mighty through God, the stronghold was pulled down. It was through God's command. It was through God's instruction. It was through obedience to God's command and instruction that the stronghold was pulled down. The same it is with us when we are dealing with strongholds of the mind, when we obey the voice of the Lord, when we obey his commands, when we walk in obedience, doing what he said, we don't need physical weapons. We don't need um, natural things things to defeat our enemy. All it takes is obedience to God's word. And then the strongholds will come down. Mighty are they pulled down mighty through God and his mighty power. Hallelujah. Strongholds of the mind will distort the lens we view life and Christ through and affect how we respond to the word of God and life situations and circumstances. So we have to be very careful. Strongholds can really damage a believer if we allow them to get fortified, to get built up, to get the high walls in our minds and our thoughts and our arguments to where we are, they are secure because a stronghold is a place of security. But when it comes to strongholds of the mind, we have to combat that and not allow these thoughts and these thought patterns to get fortified in our minds. Amen. They are deceptive in nature and rooted in lies from the enemy that we have believed over the truth of God's word. If we are not careful, strongholds will rob us of experiencing the true freedom and liberty that is ours in Christ Jesus. He whom the son sets free is free indeed. We have liberty in Christ Jesus. This is why we have to be mindful of what we allow to take root and rent space in our minds. These truths are the reason that strongholds of the mind are a targeted point within our, um, within our prayer. So these are the reasons because of the the power in a stronghold, because of the secure place, we don't want negativity to have a secure place or be a fortress within our minds. So to effectively demolish the strongholds of our mind, we must identify our enemy and recognize where our help comes from. Then we must make sure to be spiritually armed and equipped to engage in battle with the enemy and to be successful. Ephesians 6 verse 10 through 18 in the Amplify says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord. Draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Put on the full armor of God, for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavenly arms soldier, so that you may be able to successfully stand up against the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world's forces of wickedness in heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you will be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger. And having done everything that the crisis demands, to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened, tightened the wide band of truth, personal integrity, moral courage around your waist, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and upright heart, and having strapped your feet with the gospel of peace, in preparation to face the enemy with firm footed stability and readiness to produce readiness that is produced by the good news. Above all, 
lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. With all prayer and petition, pray with specific request at all times on every occasion in every season in the spirit. And with this in view, stay alert with all perseverance and petition, interceding in prayer for all God's people. It is absolutely imperative that you be fully equipped and armed with the full armor of Jesus Christ. We cannot approach this in the natural, in our flesh, but we need every part of the armor to be applied every day when we go in prayer. And don't forget that we must pray in the spirit for all the people of God. That is our charge, that is what we are to do, and we are to remember to do it and never back away from it. The spiritual battlefield of the believer takes place in the mind. This is why it is imperative to have a barrage of scriptures targeting the mind in our spiritual arsenal. Here are a couple that you can commit to memory to help you fight back the enemy. Yes, feast on all the treasures of the heavenly realm and fill your thoughts with heavenly realities and not with distractions of the natural realm. That's Colossians chapter two, verse Colossians chapter three, verse two, excuse me, in the Passion Translation. King James puts it this way. Set your affections on things above, not on the things of the earth. We have to place our mind on things in the heavenly realms and not be so focused and set here in the earthly realm. Finally, brethren, keep your thoughts continually fixed on all that is authentic and real honorable and admirable, beautiful and respectful, pure and holy, merciful and kind, and fasten your thoughts on every glorious work of God, praising him always, Philippians 4 and 8 in the Passion Translation. You might know it as the King James Version puts it. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. We have to keep our minds stayed on the things of God because the enemy will put things in our view. And if we focus on what's going on, what's happening in society, what's going on around us, it will um, keep us weighed down and allow the enemy to get place in our mind to up, um, bring up strongholds. The second type of spiritual stronghold is Yahweh himself. He is a place of safety for the believers. He is our stronghold. He is a fortified place of security and safety, our refuge in times of trouble. Again, I'm giving you Bible to back this up so that you have scriptures that you can have in your arsenal when the enemy attempts to come against you with strongholds. The first being the name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly runs to him and are safe. That's Proverbs 18 and 10 in the New Living Translation. God, you're such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You're a proven help in times of trouble more than enough and always available whenever I need you. That's Psalms 46 and one in the Passion Translation. But as for me, your strength shall be my song of joy. At each and every sunrise, my lyrics of love will fill the air. For you have been my glory fortress, a stronghold in the day of distress. That's Psalms 59, 16 in the Passion Translation. God is our refuge and help. He is a very present help in trouble. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous run into and are safe. Yes, the enemy sets up strongholds in our mind, but we have a strong tower in the name of the Lord our God. So we are to always remember and commit to speaking it out of our mouths, who God is, the fact that he alone is our strong tower. He is our safety. He is our very present help. 
The last scripture that I have concerning that says, I love you fervently and devotedly, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my keen and firm strength in whom I will trust and take refuge. He's my shield and the horn of my salvation, my high tower. That is Psalms 18, one through two in the Amplified Classical. My God, just thinking about who God is and how he keeps my rock. He's my fortress. It's in him that we trust. It is in him that we lean and rely on. No matter what the enemy brings our way, we have a high tower that's in the Lord our God, and we can trust and safely rely in him. That is our blessed assurance. Hallelujah. Jesus is mine. So grateful for the um, stronghold of the Lord my God, the mighty God, El Elyon, the most high God. He is our strong tower combating coming against and pulling down strongholds is something that all believers must diligently commit to habit it's not just for a select few or just for members of the prayer team demolishing strongholds as well as acknowledging God as your place of safety and strength should be included in your daily prayer life it is what every son and daughter must learn to do. It's not just for Saturday morning corporate prayer or, you know, praying before a service, but pulling down strongholds is something that we must do on a daily basis. It should be incorporated in every prayer and petition that we bring before God. Remember that and also remember to acknowledge him for his strength and power in our lives. The blood of Jesus goes hand in hand with this prayer point as we can apply the blood of Jesus to our thoughts and our thought patterns to effectively destroy and demolish every stronghold of the enemy in our minds. It is his blood that cleanses and washes us so we can use that in conjunction when we're praying against strongholds of the mind. My prayer today is that you are now well informed and properly equipped to fight and stand against the enemy and pulling in the pulling down of spiritual strongholds. It is my prayer that, that you understand now that um, strongholds are defense mechanisms that we are set up. It's four points that we have um, gone through to, to start a, uh, a stronghold. But to remember that you have a God on your side who is greater than any scheme that the enemy tries to bring your way. You be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It is. Um, it was my honor um, to present this prayer point to you. I pray that you were encouraged and that you were blessed by the information. And at this time, the prayer point of strongholds will be demonstrated by our very own Sister Selena Robinson. Amen, amen, and amen. Wasn't that powerful? Wasn't that powerful? Amen. So at this time, we're going to join together, um, Victory Family, and as we come together in agreement that all strongholds be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord, we thank you, God. Lord, we thank you, God, for your presence here right now, Father. Lord, we, th we come, God, we come boldly. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, with our hands raised, Father. Lord, we come boldly to the throne, God, seeking your, seeking your, um, your, your guidance, God, and your love and your grace and your mercy in the, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we come together right now praying for miracles of the mind. In the mighty name of Jesus, we take authority over the world's stronghold in the mighty name of Jesus and we rebuke the strong man in the mighty name of Jesus that so easily sets us back oh God in the mighty name of Jesus God we ask that right now by your blood and your power God that the strongholds be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Lord we thank you right now that the enemy's attack be null and void in the mighty name of Jesus oh God we thank you right now for your presence Lord we repent 
repent for not um, keeping our minds stayed on you, God. We repent for not being in the word, oh God, so that the word can wash um, our minds, God. Wash our minds clean in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we rebuke the enemy right now on all distractions in our minds, oh God. We um, rebuke him for... for uh, uh, um, the manipulation in our minds. We rebuke him for just putting in our minds that we are not worthy. We're, we're nothing father, but Lord, we know that we are, uh, uh, we are in Christ Jesus, God. And we, when we are in you father, Lord, we know that you have all things, God, you have all things in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, uh, you are our fortress father. You are our fortress in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. So deliver us. Oh God, deliver us in our time of need, in our time of need, father, Lord Jesus, Lord, you said that uh, you would never leave us. You would never forsake us in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, help us to meditate on your word day in in and day out father day in and day out father help us keep our minds stayed on you oh god keep our minds stayed on you oh god in the mighty name of jesus those who are watching right now god who are dealing with strongholds in the mighty name of jesus and i ask that you take over right now father let your spirit move in this place and within me oh god lord those who are oh, who are dealing with strongholds in their minds oh god lord help them to see the changes that need to be done in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus and lord we thank you right now we thank you for the word that went forth tonight from our, our sister Rhonda father to help us to understand what the strongholds are really about oh god lord help us to change the way that we think help us to change that the way that we think so it attaches to our heart father and it connects us to you in your word oh god we thank you god we we thank you for change oh god we thank you for change we thank you for the mental noah we thank you for the change right now oh god God, we call those people back who, who may have backslid because of the thoughts, because of the hurt that happened in their lives. We call them back into the kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, we rebuke you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray that the minds are, are opened back up, Father. We pray that the eyes are open back up, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray that the ears would open so that we can hear from you even the more, oh God. We thank you for your presence, even in the studio right now, oh God. We love you, Jesus. We love you. We love you. We love you today, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We thank you for deliverance, Father. We thank you for setting us free. We give you the praise even right now, Father, for dealing with our hearts, Father, for dealing with our minds, Father, and keeping our minds stayed on you, oh God. We thank you for the word that's changing our lives, oh God. We thank you for the word that comes from our bishop and our pastor that rests within our hearts and in our minds that causes change, oh God. Keep us open even more to receive from you, oh God. We, we love you and we bless your name on today. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen and amen and amen. Thank you for joining us today on our prayer ministry on praying. What's the point? God bless you. Have a good day.